Uh, so I joined the HAC and um, went through my initial training at Enfield Playing Fields, North, North London. And then I was posted to the Royal Berkshire Regiment, the 5th, 5th Battalion of the Royal Berkshire Regiment, <coughs> who, when I joined them, they were, <laughs> they were up in Scotland training when I joined them, and I managed to catch German measles. So I was in hospital in Aldershot with German measles, feeling, feeling perfectly all right, really. I mean, I didn't feel ill or anything. And uh, I can remember sitting up in bed during that, I suppose I had a week there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> my father and mother popped their heads up outside through the window, looked at me through the window, because my father was calling on his baker customer then on that, on that particular day. That was his day to go there. And then 44, of course, I was I, um, was switched from the Royal Berkshire Regiment to the 5th Battalion, the Wiltshire Regiment. I can remember spending the night on the 5th on board ship in Southampton Water and seeing the massive craft going backwards and forwards in the Solent, backwards and forwards, a tremendous busy. Not a German plane in sight, which is quite amazing, really, quite amazing. And then we, on the evening, we set sail across the channel and um, I can remember f the feeling I had was, um, I was so, I felt privileged to be part of this armada and this battle, which is probably the most important in, in, his, in our history. Uh, and the ships ploughing through the water in, in the dark, not a light at all, in the dark. And just seeing the uh, shores of England gradually disappear, it does disappear. Thought, well, it's going to be a while before I see old England again. Well, on D-Day morning, we were there was a, a woken up by a voice over the Tannoy ships. Tannoy, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. It's four o'clock on a fine morning, and you mustn't be late for the party. And uh, I think I thought to myself, was well, some party? Huh. Um, and uh, so. We got up, got dressed, had a good, a very good breakfast, and just waited for our call. Uh, and um, the Can we landed behind the Canadians. The Canadians uh, did the on Juno Beach. The Canadians did the assault, uh, the first assault, uh, and then uh, we had to follow up and be part of the. Uh, beach defence until such time as it was no, no longer required. On uh, yeah, D-Day morning, we had a, we waited for our call, and then the, our call came for our our code number to board ship. So we got on got on the landing craft, flat landing craft, hanging from the davits of the boat, and um, I got in bo on board last of all, so I was at the back. And um, I remember the, it, was, it was overcast sky. We could hear the planes going over our planes, and we thought of oh, their good doing their doing their job amongst the Germans. Eventually, hit an obstacle. And the boat started filling with water, and we had to get out. And I jumped into a water boat up to my waist, I suppose. And um, the Canadian, the, the sea wall was concave there, and it was absolutely th lined with these the Canadians who'd done the assault. There was about 20 of them lying on the beach who had been killed in the, in the initial assault. And then um, the rest of them were waiting for the beach exit to be cleared. And it, well, that didn't take very long, it was cleared after, after we landed, and they disappeared. <laughs> And we got on with the job of um, helping as we were able to. I remember during that time, one uh, a, 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 a doodle bug came over. I don't know whether you know the doodle bugs. They were fairly late in the war. 
They did damage in London and various places. This doodlebug came over, chug, 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 chug. We watched it, and all of a sudden, it turned round, came back, went back again. Something was wrong with it, I suppose. Went back again and dived down amongst the Germans. Everybody cheered like anything. <laughs> and, um, uh, but uh, yes, we had a couple of months on the beach. We were walking along the side of a bungalow and there's the bungalow wall, the path and a privet hedge, shoulder high privet hedge on my right. And all of a sudden there's a sewer bang. On the sewer I, I dropped the ground. But the bang came when I was halfway down. And I know that because my map case, when I got up, my map case had a hole through it. And that had been lying flat against my back. And so as I fell forward, it must have swung around and been dangling in front of me. A bit of shrapnel went through it. I had an anorak on which was uh, a bit loose. And in my right hand pocket, a pair of socks rolled up in a ball. And they had a bit of shrapnel left in when I got up. So the bit of shrapnel, another bit of shrapnel went pretty close to me through the, the socks and finally I was also I had a rifle well <laughs> as a lieutenant I was a lieutenant then I had a platoon I didn't normally carry rifles but I, I wanted to carry a um, I should be able to pick off the enemy when you before it got too close <laughs> to me um, so I had a rifle I was carrying it at the trail that's parallel to the ground and um, Another bit of shrapnel caught the wood on the rifle about an inch in front of my fingers. But that was it. I didn't get so much of a pinprick. But there was a chap in about ten paces in front of me. Uh, he didn't get up. So, yeah, I felt very much so that, uh, that was God protected me then. I can think of another occasion when I walked over a road. I've been in the company headquarters and I was going back to my unit. And as I walked across the road, I saw a German tank coming up the road fairly, I don't know, a few hundred yards away, with three men on either side. So I just carried on walking. I dived down the cellar of a house opposite, because most houses had cellars. I thought, well, I don't know where they'll, they'll probably chuck a grenade down. I don't know where it'll be. Uh, I tried to choose a place where I would be least hurt. Um, and in a strange sort of way, I wasn't scared or frightened or anything like that at all. Seemed to, uh, God seemed to dull those senses. And I was just the thought of well, doing what I could to preserve myself, really. Nothing happened, nothing at all. And I imagine that the, t the tank and those, those chaps were on a, in a really probing to see where, where, where we were. They saw me crossing over. Thought, hmm, they're, they're, they're around here somewhere. I must have turned around and gone back. But anyway, I saw no more German. I waited till dark and I came up and looked, expected to see a place alive with Germans. Of course, none at all. Then there was the occasion when uh, I had to put in a platoon attack, a German position, and I wanted, again, I wanted to do a recce. So I took two men with me, um, and anti must have been an anti-personnel mine. They had the, what they call the shoe mine, S-C-H-U, and it had a prong sticking up through the grass. If you stepped on it, you probably lost your foot or something. Then the chap behind me stood in one of these mines. And then the chap behind him and myself lifted him up to carry him to waiting stretcher bearers. We had two teams of stretcher bearers, really. And then he stood on one. And so I had two chaps here wounded with uh, having been on their mines. So I crawled out, feeling with my hands in front of me, 
and round, or round a sweeping round to see if I could feel any of these prongs sticking up. And if it would be better to have my hand blown off than my face blown off. And um, went to get two teams of stretcher bearers who should have been waiting. They were not there. And all the, the, and the platoon was in the background. They'd all gone back to the farmhouse. And it was, a, it was a large field. And I went back and found them all in the farmhouse there. And um, I'm afraid I was quite angry that they had done that. And um, so I uh, took two, the two teams of stretcher bearers with me to go and rescue these two chaps. And I think it's only God's mercy that daylight caught up on us and we hadn't turned around to go back. I think if we had, in fact, got up, and, uh, got to the, got back to, them, to these two men during the during the night, the, the enemy would be putting up his flares, and um, the chances are the stretcher bearer teams themselves would have been treading on mines. So really, it was a mercy that we, we didn't weren't able to really, I suppose. Um, but I, I wasn't. Somehow, in a strange way, I was in a situation where I didn't like it, but I wasn't scared stiff or anything. We were sitting in an armchair, um, oh, it must have been terrifying. But I didn't have that feeling. Well, my, my faith has been my bedrock of existence all through my life. I don't think I've ever, I've never, as far as I can remember, I had queries about my faith. Um, God has led, led me and guided me all the time. And uh, I believed I was being protected and led.